What goes on inside the walls of the Federica Mora Psychiatric Hospital is a closely guarded secret. Journalists are not allowed. So we've arranged a visit posing as a charity offering help. So no, El Grupo Challenge Trust. We're taken first to the recreational area, and it's clear just how much help is needed. Lying on the ground, what appears to be heavily sedated patients, their rags and dirty bodies, evidence of the neglect the authorities try to hide. This is Guatemala's only state-run psychiatric facility. The 340 patients range from violent, mentally disturbed criminals to patients with learning disabilities, abandoned by their families. There are no care staff in sight, but guards are everywhere. In the wards, we enter a hell on earth. There are almost 70 patients on this ward, looked after by just two or three care staff. The patients crave attention. Are you coming with me? The beds are in a terrible state, and there are pools of urine on mattresses. Patients sleeping, they've all been sedated. The staff say it's the only way they can control the huge number of patients here. And as you approach the patients lying in the bed, there's an overwhelming stench of urine. I'm actually quite overwhelmed. The Guatemalan government insists that only the minimum recommended dose of sedation is used on patients. It also says there are cleaning staff and trained nurses to provide care. The campaign group Disability Rights International gained limited access to the hospital in 2012. A patient told the charity's director, Eric Rosenthal, about how she was restrained. We're going to see the restraints hanging from the wall where she was tied. And she revealed an even more disturbing layer of abuse. She said on her very first day, she was sexually abused upon admission. It's one layer more horrific than any place I've seen before. In reaction to the charity's footage, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights ordered the Guatemalan government to end the neglect and abuse two years ago. But during our visit, it's evident little has changed. Still believing we are charity workers, the director admits there is still abuse and blames police guards. A former patient tells me she was sexually abused, not by the guards, but by those who were supposed to care for her. She was just 17. A male nurse came in, and since I was sedated, I wasn't aware of it. I didn't realise until the next day that I had lost my innocence. So I realised that what had happened that night is that a male nurse had come in and raped me. The Guatemalan government says it hasn't received any reports of sexual abuse or rape, but it has ordered an internal investigation. And it intends to make improvements to the hospital and the standards of care. But campaigners point out the same promises were made in 2012. They now plan to launch a new legal bid to shut down the hospital. Chris Rogers, BBC News, Guatemala.